Hello, welcome to the preview of the series on web automation and data scraping using Selenium and Python. The next two or so minutes brush on whatever we shall handle in the rest of the series. For these tutorials, we'll make use of the Selenium library that we shall use to manipulate the browser. In case you never checked the video on installing and removing Selenium, you might find it useful to. The video discusses in clarity how to install Selenium, so if you don't have the library installed yet, you should head there first. The link to the same is in the description below or in the pop-up box aside. Besides acquiring know-how on browser manipulation, another aim of these series is to scrap data from FlashScore.com, a sports stats website, then use the data to at least calculate the total head-to-head -head goals. There's only much that we could do with the data. The browser that we'll make use of is Firefox, so you might want to install the same. We'll be using Python version 3.7.2, but any later versions would do. For this project, we'll make use of Python's own IDLE, or Integrated Development and Learning Environment. So everything should be simple and straightforward. We'll crawl through the football entries, opening up each match window and scraping data. The data we'll be needing will be for the last five head-to-head -head matches, and using those, we will compute the total goals scored in these last five head-to-head -head matches. After scraping, the printed data should be output to Python shell, and could be saved for further use. We can get our hands dirty, now that we are done with the introduction. First off, we'll go ahead and create a new file, and save it to any directory. Next, we import the Selenium WebDriver. The work of the Selenium WebDriver is to communicate with the browser and control it. Without Selenium, this tutorial series will be impossible. Since we'll be making use of Firefox browser, we shall invoke the WebDriver.Firefox method and assign it the variable browser. Selenium also includes methods to invoke Chromium-based browsers. Next, we shall invoke the browser variable, and then pass the flash score URL as a string in the .get function. The .get method exits only after the page brought back by the URL fully loads. After our page loads, we will maximize the browser using the browser.maximize underscore window method. Later on, we will be opening secondary match windows. That necessitates that we sort of store the primary window and secondary windows as variables, and that way, we can switch between the windows by invoking the variables. Therefore, we will assign our parent window to the variable, window underscore before. Notice the browser windows are stored as arrays. Our particular parent window is stored as the first element of the array. Then, we'll have the shell output the browser title using the print method. We'll then save and run the program to make sure we're on the right track. Selenium launches the Gecko Driver console. This console acts as a proxy between the Firefox browser and the web driver. As you'll notice on the left end of the address bar, we've got a robot face, indicating that the browser is under remote control rather than under a user's control. We get back our browser title. Now that we have our browser open, we can start by hiding off elements that could get in the way of our scraper. The data privacy box gets into the flow of the page, so if the algorithm has to scrap data hidden behind the box, it will throw an element not found exception as we will see later. In order to hide the box, we will need to identify its ID or class name. It's worth noting that the two are not the same thing. 
We right-click on the box and select Inspect Element option from the Context menu. The element gets highlighted in the inspector. It is given an ID name. We'll copy the ID value and paste it for later use. Meanwhile, we can append a style attribute to prevent the element from displaying or taking up space. This is also exactly what the algorithm would do upon loading the page. Upon removal, the div still leaves behind a template. We'll need to hide that too. So we inspect the element and copy the class name this time. We also append a style attribute to hide away the template. Next, we click upon a match and have a new window pop open. After hiding away the privacy box, we get a clear view of the head-to-head -head matches section, which is of importance for the tutorial. We will need to gather scores from all the five matches, and we can also get the total number of goals scored in the five matches. This particular head-to-head -head history gives an aggregate of 12 goals. We get back to our coding window. In order to hide the elements of interest, we'll pass some JavaScript parameters to Selenium. In Python, the JavaScript code will be passed as a string in the execute underscore script method. We will copy the ID value of the first element and pass it into the document.getElementById method, then append the style attributes after closing the brackets. Next, we also pass the template class name into the document.getElementsByClassName method. Notice, we are using class names method, which will return an array of elements that bear the same class name. Since we are interested with the first instance, we shall indicate the same using a zero in box brackets, which represents the first element of an array. We head back to the main browser window to inspect the match entries. Clicking on a match entry pops the match window. We will get the class name for the clickable entry.
We however come across three different class names. We will have to inspect a finished match, so as to see the class names assigned to the same. You'll notice that the class name event underscore match hyphen scheduled is not assigned to a finished match. That is the class name that sets apart a finished match from an anticipated one. This, therefore, is the class name we'll be looking out for. We copy that and paste it to the notepad. In order to point at an element, we will have to write a CSS selector that will begin looking for the element right from its parent element. The suitable parent for the football entries will be the highlighted sport name soccer element which is highlighted. We need only one class name so we will choose the more suitable soccer class name. We'll be having a pseudo element selector tutorial so watch out for the same. We will then proceed to write the pseudo element selector on notepad for a little later use. Next, we type in the find element by CSS selector method and paste in our pseudo element selector as a string. We will require that Selenium visits a number of football entries in scrap data. For that reason, we have to tell Selenium to move to the next entry after visiting and scraping data from one. Hence, we introduce a variable x, which shall be increment as we'll see. Meanwhile, the x has to be converted into a string. We add the dot click function, indicating to Selenium that after locating the particular element, Selenium should click on it. Next, we declare the variable x, then assign it a numeric value of 2. The reason why x is assigned a value of 2 is because the first match entry is the second child element of the parent element soccer. The first child today happens to be the league title for Argentina's Copa de la Liga Professional. We also introduce a new variable n, which we'll discuss about later on. Then we introduce a for loop which will contain the rest of the logic for the tutorial. Our for loop also includes Python's range function. We pass 0 and n into the range function to instruct Python to run the for loop 5 times, as 5 is the value assigned to n. Essentially, the range function defaults to 0 as a starting value, and runs to 5, which means it increments values from 0 to 5, but not including 5. In Python, a loop and a condition are identified by a full colon, and the block within the loop is offset from the left margin using the tab key. Next, we introduce a try block, as our program would not necessarily land on a match entry every time it increments x, and could instead land on the league title. If we do not use a try block, the shell would throw a no element found exception and execution will be terminated. We use the backslash to break off a long statement just to enhance code readability. To prevent the no such element found error, we use the accept block to handle the same anytime it has to occur. We import the no such element exception from selenium.common.exceptions.
While at it, we also import time to make it possible to delay code execution for a given time period, normally in seconds. Before hiding the privacy box, we have to wait for at least a second for it to load in the page and pop up, else we'll land a no such element found error message. Back to the try block, when a no such element exception occurs, we shall increment x by 1 and pass the new value of x to the nth child selector. Now we get to see the essence of the variable, x. The value of the variable increases by 1 every time a match entry is successfully scraped. Hence, every time the variable n increases by 1, the value of x would have been increased. Essentially, we'll have a total output of 5 matches, which would not have been the case had we been passing the value of n instead of x. We will appropriately tab the blocks then copy and paste the try except blocks two more times, increasing the value of x with each paste. After successfully opening the secondary window, we would expect that code execution be delayed until 4 seconds elapse, to allow for the secondary window to fully load. We will then assign the secondary window a variable window underscore after, then have Selenium focus on the new window. We could print out the title of the secondary window. Before executing another iteration, we increase the value of i and x by 1, then close the browser and return focus to the primary window. We then test the code that we have so far to make sure it's got no errors. We get back the primary and secondary windows titles, and we can modify their output a little. Stick around for part 2, where we'll get to scrap the score values from the matches. <laughs> 